Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL Series, Episode 47. We're going to be looking at an introduction to textures today. So let's just talk briefly through textures. We're going to look at texture mapping and how you can map a texture onto an object in WebGL. Uh, you should understand what Texel is, or texture element technically, and you could think of them as texture pixels. In order to do a texture, you need to have four steps, which is preparing and loading an image, specifying the image mapping, load the texture image and configure it for WebGL, and then finally extract the texels from the image in the fragment shader. You should be aware that texture coordinates are from 0 to 1. So if you think of the lower left as 0, and then it's 0, 1 over here, 1, 0 over here, and 1, 1 in the upper right. So you, just like the GL frag chord from the previous episode, if you want to think about uh, the area for that. Uh, next up, here's our image that I'll be using today, just, just a simple crate. You want your images to be in a uh, multiple of two, generally speaking. So uh, 2 by 2, 4 by 4, 8 by 8, 16, 16, uh, any kind of variable of two is preferred. Uh, let's jump into the code. So here we have our usual setup. Uh, you'll note we have a global texture and a global U sampler, which we can uh, later on clean those up, but for now we're just going to make them global. We have this init vertex buffers, and then the init textures here, uh, which are new. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what those do. The vertex buffers is going to go ahead and set up our uh, rectangular uh, object for this. Just like the multi-attributes episode, we are specifying points as well as the texture coordinates simultaneously. So everything is off all together here um, with a stride of four because we have four uh, points per object line. So you can see here that this offset is two for the atex coordinates and it's a size of two because it represents two digits here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and set everything up. Render buffers does the usual things. So you can see that it'll take the positions and text cords and automatically bind all that uh, appropriately. So we don't have to do anything special with that. And we're going to return the in, which will ultimately be passing into the init textures below. Init textures is going to go ahead and use this new function called gl.createTexture. It creates a texture object. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create an image. This is not a WebGL specific thing, but just a HTML specific thing. Uh, we're going to give it an onload function, which is going to call load texture. And it's going to be given a callback, an argument, uh, which we'll see in just a moment. And then finally, when we do image.source, that's going to tell the browser to load this image. So in this case, the text crate. Text crate. Uh, here we go and load image. This is where a lot of the magic happens, but not all of it. Um, so first we're going to go ahead and say we're going to unpack and flip on the Y. So what happens if we don't do that is you could see this image has to create with the upward sloping direction. And here's our final image here, the upward sloping action. If we don't flip over the Y, WebGL is going to unpack it in the opposite direction. So what we want to do is we want to flip over the Y axis so that this is loaded correctly. That's the first step. Next, we're going to say, here's the texture that we want to bind to a 2D texture. We're going to go ahead and give it this parameter of min filter and linear. I'm not going to explain this now, but we'll get into that in a later episode. Same thing with the MIP map. Uh, this is actually what's going to put the texture onto this said image. So here's the image that has been provided, and it's going to bind it to the texture. And um, finally, we have we're resetting the bind texture to null so that we don't leave a currently active texture on there. In case we wanted to do more, we could do more. Uh, we'll see those in later episodes as well. Finally, if we have a callback, we'll go ahead and call it, do anything that's happening here. So in the case of this, what I have above, is we're going to have a callback of draw, and we're going to pass it the n uh, for the vertex buffers. So call is, uh, excuse me, draw, it's going to be called after all of this binding happens. So now we're going to go ahead and call draw, given some arguments. Once again, we're going to activate texture zero, or I shouldn't say once again for the first time, we're going to activate the first texture, and we're going to bind the texture that was previously loaded uh, above. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and find the use sampler and then set the use sampler. Uh, and what that does is that allows us to actually use the currently bound texture to a use sampler. And then we're going to draw arrays with the given argument of n. And so here's our vertex shader. Uh, as always, we just have the atex chord. We also have a vtex chord, which we go ahead and uh, this will go pass through to the fragment shader. The fragment shader will take that in, and then it's going to use this built-in function called texture 2D in the use sampler, which is going to contain the currently active temp, uh, sampler 2D for that uh, texture with the image loaded into it. And given the coordinates, it's going to set the colors of it such that we finally have our displayed crate image right here. So that's a mouthful. There's a lot of different things going on. We have sampler 2Ds here, texture 2Ds here. Um, we have activating textures, binding textures, passing for passing this uniform one eye in, um, and then a multitude of other functions here. Um, kind of put various simple uh, instructions for each of these, but I didn't go into details on text parameter. I as well as text image 2D, bitmap, uh, etc. We'll get into those a little more detail later and show what some of the different types of uh, filters and parameters and everything that we can do are. But I just kind of wanted a brief introduction so that you can kind of see how you can start playing with textures and we'll be playing with textures for quite a few episodes moving forward. So uh, that's it for today's episode. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, like this video, share it on social media if you will, Go to programming TIL and sign up for my newsletter. Have a great one.